Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. By the title of, of this video, you can see that it's all about my trip to Guatemala. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you have seen some pictures that I have been posting from my trip. So basically, I'm going to talk about why I went, how it was being vegan in another country, some slang words in Guatemala that you should know if you're going, what I don't like, what I do like, and basically a little bit of everything about my trip. So without talking anymore, let's begin. So some people were asking me, why did I go? So it's been about 11 or 12 years that I last went. And the first time that I went, I was four. So for those of you who don't know, my mom is from Guatemala and my dad is from Honduras. I was born and raised in Miami. So ever since I was little, I have been going to Guatemala. My mom would always send us for summer vacation for two or three months. And so it's not the first time I go to the country. And the last time I went, I was so young. I was so, I'd say maybe 18 or 19, I'm forgetting. And so going back now, I see all the differences. Everything's so different. It's a whole new experience. So it was great going back. And I basically went for two reasons. One, it was going to be my little sister's 15th birthday party here we celebrate sweet 16 but in latin american countries what you celebrate are 15 the 15th quinceañera party so that's why i went that was my main reason and number two to be able to go to different places okay so how was it being vegan and i think this applies not only going to Guatemala, but just any other country in general. And this is what I do. If it's in the US, it's so easy because wherever you go, you can just grab your phone and go to Google Maps and type the word vegan and all the search results for the most nearby vegan places will come up. That's what I do if I didn't plan my trip and I, I'm just being a spontaneous. But if I plan for my trip, then I go on tripadvisor.com and I gather a list of places that I really want to go to. So that's the other way. So what I did for this trip to Guatemala, I kind of did the same. I went on tripadvisor.com and I made a list of a few places that I had in mind. But when I went to Lantigua, I didn't have internet access. So I asked our taxi driver if I could get some internet and he let me use it. And I went to Happy Cow app. It's a really useful app if you're vegetarian, vegan, or just looking for healthy places to eat in general. And that's what I did. I typed in vegan and a few places came up. I made it just in time because I got there like at 3 p.m. and the place was closing at 4 p.m. So just keep in mind some places can close earlier than usual. So if you go to main places like where a lot of tourists go, it's so easy to find vegan food. So in Lantigua, the place was called Piña. The translation would be like pineapple. And it was okay, an okay food, nothing amazing. It was just good, okay. But when I went to Atitlan, and you can kind of see as you're walking by, places will have the menu outside in big colorful letters for the most part because Guatemala, they just love colors. And they will have the menu or the options. It will tell you if they have vegan options, if it's vegan friendly. And a lot of those places I saw they had tofu or tenpeh options. So that was great. And let me tell you, I went to a place and I'm a little bit upset because I didn't write down the name of the place, which is so weird for me because I'm always taking pictures or video. So it's just weird for me that I didn't write it down or I took a picture or something. And it was one of the best foods I've ever had. I'm not exaggerating. It's one of the best foods I've eaten this whole year. It was the tofu fajita and they had other tofu options. 
and it was amazing we almost left just because we saw the owner kind of mistreating he was not being nice to the server and he was being so nice he was doing such a good job but in latin american countries it's common to see that where the owners will not treat their employees too well so before i left i made sure to let him know the server i told him let your boss know that he cooks so well the food is amazing but just chill basically <laughs> just be nicer i said and he laughed about it and he said yeah that's just the way he is but yeah the food was incredible you know you can taste it it's it's so much full of flavor it's fresh it was so good so i really enjoyed that and the other option if you're at home or you you're staying at a hotel or airbnb just go to the marketplace and you will find fresh fruit and veggies at such a low price. It's so affordable and everything is so full of flavor. It's naturally organic. You don't have to worry about the food containing chemicals like here. Like to give you an example, you can find like let's say five avocados for five quetzales. So that's even less than a dollar. So just one dollar is seven quetzales. So imagine that it's so cheap for us that go from here to those type of countries. It's so affordable. So that's awesome. To make this video kind of fun, let me tell you some common words in Guatemala that if you're going, you should know about. So how do you call a dog in Guatemala? Just in general Spanish, you know the word is perro, but if you hear this word in Guatemala, you know they are referring to a dog and the name is Chucho. <laughs> so Chucho is a dog. Of course they use perro, but some people use Chucho. The next word, Chuco. <laughs> so that basically means dirty, like something filthy. So in general, the common word in Spanish would be sucio for dirty, but in Guatemala, they use chuco. Chompipe. Do you want to eat chompipe? <laughs> you might be asking, what is that? So in standard Spanish would be pavo for turkey, but in Guatemala, they say chompipe. <laughs> give me pisto. So this means give me money. So in standard Spanish would be dinero for money, but in Guatemala, if you hear pisto, it means money. Chute. You are so chute. So this means you like basically mind your own business. In Spanish, general Spanish would be intrometido, metiche, but chute in Guatemala means like mind your own business. <laughs> Don't be chute. <laughs> And one word just because I could keep going on and on. This is so fun. And I don't use these words in my common Spanish language. But when I go to Guatemala, I know exactly what they mean. If I use them here in the United States, because there are many people from other countries, they would not know what I'm saying. Okay, one more. Patatush. He got patatush. So he got sick. In standard Spanish, se enfermó, se siente mal. But... In Guatemala would be patatush. <laughs> okay, let's talk about five things I didn't like about Guatemala. Number one, contamination. So this is something really obvious. Once you get there, you get in the car, all you breathe in, I don't know if it's contamination like air pollution or just the gas from the cars, but it's really obvious and it just gets into your lungs. So I was trying to kind of hold my breath so it wouldn't get into my lungs, but it's unavoidable. You're still gonna breathe it, you're still going to notice it, but it's something that it just goes into your nose once you get there. Number two is paper in the toilet. So here in the US, we go to the bathroom, we do whatever we have to do, and we put the paper in the toilet. In Guatemala, it's different. Put the paper in the trash. And so I don't know if it's just kind of their culture or it has to do something with their pipeline system. I have no idea. But even when I went to the airport, they had a sign saying, put the paper in the trash, not in the toilet. And I saw this sign in a couple of places. So again, I don't know if it's just, they just 
got used to that or it has something to do with their system and how it works i don't know but yeah just don't forget to put the paper in the trash not the toilet Number three, if you're a big animal lover, especially if you're vegetarian or vegan and you love animals so much, this is going to break your heart, but I think it's common in a lot of Latin American countries where you go and you see dogs everywhere. They don't have a home, they live on the streets, they are skinny, they are sick, and they get run over. So on my way from Atitlan, going back to Villanueva, I counted four dogs that got run over and that breaks my heart. So it's something for you to keep in mind when you go to these type of countries. It's so common to see that and you will see trucks with cows or sheep and maybe they're being sent to slaughterhouse. But yeah, that, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> Number four, public transportation. This time, in the two weeks that I went, I never went on a bus. It's so cheap, it's so affordable, but the buses, they get full of people and you risk that somebody is going to steal something from you, they're gonna get too near you, everyone is so tight, so I feel like the public transportation could be better, but yeah, I wouldn't rely on that too much when I go. This time, we only, we hired a taxi driver to be with us the whole day and he would take us to places. So I thought that was a really great idea. And number five, this kind of goes with the one I just mentioned, but it's the traffic. There's a lot of people nowadays, almost all the family members like the mom, the dad, the kids, they have, or the teenagers, they have cars. So there's a lot of traffic. So if you wanna get to a place on time, just plan ahead of time to get out of your house ahead of time so you don't get caught in traffic okay so now five things that i really like about guatemala number one are the views i love the scenery i love the mountain view living in miami i grew up basically just seeing everything flat just beaches and the bright blue sky and the palms and greens. Something I always love from Guatemala were the mountains and being able to go to the roof of your house and just see the mountains. It's so beautiful. Especially when we were going to Atitlan, there's a spot called El Mirador and basically it's kind of like a quick stop. You can park your car, they have benches and you can take pictures and video and it's so beautiful. It was so majestic. I felt like I was in a dream. I was like in awe. I was so amazed and I enjoyed those couple of minutes that we were standing there that was my favorite part of the whole trip, just watching that scene that that was so beautiful, like, oh my goodness. The feeling I felt, it was like a tingly sensation. It was so amazing for me. Number two, the fruits and veggies. I love how you can go to the marketplace and find it at an affordable price and everything is just natural, fresh, organic, and it's full of flavor, so that it's something I love. I enjoyed it so much. Number three are the nice people. People in Guatemala, they tend to be nice, they have good manners, they make you feel at home. People tell you hi, good morning, goodbye, have a nice day. So I just love just in general how people are. They are so nice. Number four, the weather. It's actually called the country of eternity spring. So basically it's just a fresh climate compared to Miami where it's so hot, it's always humid in Guatemala. You don't feel that humidity. At nighttime, sometimes you don't even need the AC because it gets cold. So just in general, I love the climate. And number five, everything is so informal, so casual. Like for example, you go and you can park your car wherever. Like, of course, it depends which place, but in general, they're not gonna tell you anything. You're not gonna get a ticket if you're not wearing your seatbelt. Like for example, this time I went with one of my friends to a shopping center and the parking lot was full. And what she did, she went straight to the baby carriage parking space and I told her, oh, but you don't have the sign for the baby. And she told me, no, it's fine. They don't tell you anything. Don't worry. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Here you easily get a ticket for that or for not wearing your seatbelt. So those are little things that you don't have to worry about over there. It's just casual. 
So that's it for my trip to Guatemala. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're going, if you're planning on going, I highly recommend it. The places that most people go to, La Antigua, Atitlán. Don't mistake it for Amatitlán because that's what I did. They sound similar, but they are two different places. So it's Atitlán, Tikal, where they have the Mayan ruins. It's beautiful. So there are so many beautiful places that you can go to. So I'm planning to go back. I don't know when but this time i really want to plan out my trip and would i ever live there i don't know it's something i have considered if you earn money and you live there let's say 500 to 700 dollars you live a good life you're basically rich over there if you earn that money but that again it depends what part of guatemala but if you want to live in la antigua the rent there is only 500 dollars for a one bedroom so for us that go from here it's super affordable especially in miami where the rent is like 1500 even 2000 or even more so if we go from here to there it's so affordable to live you would just have to think about how to keep earning in US dollars either if you work from home or if you have your own business here and you send your money there that would be a great way and basically that's it I already shared my blog videos but they are in my Spanish blogging channel about my trip it's almost half an hour each one because I did one video for my first week of the trip and then another half hour of my second week in Guatemala in case you want to check those out it's in the description box but it's in Spanish I also celebrated my daughter's birthday over there even though her birthday is actually tomorrow so it was her first time celebrating her birthday it was Mario theme that's what she picked she loves the color blue and it was her first time hitting piñatas for her birthday party so that was exciting for her and I also feel my sister's quince birthday party that's also in the description box if you want to see it basically that's it don't forget you can find me on all social media pages with the name lynn sire i'm really active on instagram i just love posting pictures it's one of my hobbies and if you have any questions or any video ideas leave it in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video kisses bye